here with you for Arcadia Economics on a very wild day in Silverland. Uh, where to begin? We'll start with First Majestic Silver, which you can see is up in pre-market trading over $6, approximately 44 45%, let's call it. And i um, guessing you're already aware. If not, <clears throat> we've had this situation this week. A uh, couple shorts, uh, short squeezes happening, particularly in GameStop, as you can see up here, which was soaring once again. There is a form on Reddit called Wall Street Bets where they've been targeting some short situations. Um, GameStop, I believe, was over $500 this morning. Uh, so let's see. Uh, wow, came back in quite a bit. I thought it was up a couple hours ago. Certainly, you're going to see a lot of vol volatile trading in these. Um, but it looks like they targeted First Majestic Silver, which is fantastic news because talked before. In fact, we did an episode last week highlighting the short position in First Majestic Silver, which you see down here, 23% of the shares floated. Um, we had Dave Kranzler, Chris Marchese, and Rob Keynes. Uh, talking about that last week, and hopefully I'm live here. I'm getting an indication that uh, looks like we are. So um, anyway, uh, I will continue on here. Hope that you guys are seeing me out there. But anyway, uh, yeah, we did a, a call on that last week, that short position, and sure enough, uh, really overnight, this has happened. Um, you see, uh, let's take a look at the chart going back a couple of days here. So yeah, it was still at the close yesterday, 1380-ish, 89. Um, and again, you can see pre-market up at 1893 on this feed. Let's take a look at First Majestic here on uh, CNBC. They are showing 2025. Again, when the market opens, a lot of this will become clear. And I know we're human, so we all want to watch and see what it's looking like. But you'll find out soon enough. Um, a few notes on that. Aside from, I mean, this is, I think this is a historic day in Silverland, especially First Majestic being the leading silver company, Keith Newmeyer being the one who's spoken out for so long about the short position in silver. I don't know if that's connected to why there was a large short position on First Majestic yet in either case, uh, making a crack in it today. I mean, I know there's a lot of people in the silver world that are gonna be thrilled just at 19 or $20 First Majestic. Although let's take a look at GameStop, which was an $18 stock three weeks ago. So while certainly, $20 is $21 is good news. And by all means, this is not legal financial advice. Definitely a day to talk with people you know and trust. But I mean, we really don't know. No one really knows how this will play out. I mean, based on what you see in GameStop here, I mean, let's take another look. I'll uh, pull out the one month. So here is... Uh, GameStop at, what is it, $40 here, a little farther back at $20. I wonder if we can see the overnight trading. So it went from 20 to 310. And as you can see early in the morning, yes, uh, just a couple of hours ago, it was over $500, then got hammered down, and then uh, got hammered down again. I mean, that's the kind of movement that you would expect to see in a situation like this. But also makes you wonder... Could First Majestic be at $50 or $100 in a day or two? To be clear, I'm not saying that will happen, but when we live in an environment where Bitcoin goes up 10, 15X in a year, Tesla's up 19X in a year and a half, GameStop just did what it did in a couple of weeks, and here you have a heavily shorted stock in First Majestic Silver, that people are finding out about, let alone the silver situation. And we will have some brief news about that as well. Um, so again, this is not legal financial advice, but it's a situation where as a former equity, op current equity option trader too, 
Um, but I used to be an equity option trader running a specialist post on the New York Stock Exchange. So I would see things like this. And anyone who goes out there telling you they know exactly how this is going to unfold, I would be careful of. But going to be a great day, it looks like. And certainly congratulations to Keith Newmeyer. Um, well-deserved, sir. Well-deserved. Uh, also, uh, congratulations to Todd Anthony and Mark Carruthers. I know a lot of you bo know both of them run their investor relations. And I mean, it's exciting. I did load up on some call options this week. So I am particularly excited for the open on this one, but also just uh, really getting to know those guys, becoming friends with them and feeling like a partner in this cause. So again, congratulations to Todd, Keith, and Mark. Um, we're going to make this one short. Actually, we'll have a separate video coming up. We've got some silver events that now tacking on. But um, just if there's anyone in the Reddit group or uh, anybody outside of the Reddit group, but new to the silver manipulation, wanting to get up to speed, maybe like something that could instantly put this in perspective, I'd watch this one, the Silver Manipulation Smoking Gun. Link is in the description field below, so you can go down there and click on it. Um, I thought that was one of the videos that really laid out the glaring nature of this and will give you some stunning data points in case you're wondering, could this really be happening as many in Silverland allege? <clears throat> fortunately, though, fortunately, you don't have to take my word for it. In fact, I'm going to cue up the sound on that one, too. This is Bart Chilton, former CFTC commissioner. He was a commissioner during the agency's silver manipulation investigation back, it was like 2009 to 2014. So when they said they found nothing publicly, although keep in mind, this is the exact period that the Department of Justice now has found, in their own words, on their press release, hundreds of thousands of occasions of spoofing. Now, spoofing, suppression, manipulation, in the end, they dump contracts on the market that paper, gold, and silver that doesn't exist in any amount that is helpful. I'd say the terms people get caught up in the semantics a bit, but just for anyone new to this, again, this is a regulator who was inside CFTC. So let's hear what he had to say. Again, I appreciate you mentioning the spoofing. Curious uh, because uh, my understanding of what, how some of the manipulation has occurred is that, you know, if silver is trading $20.05, there's a lot of stop orders placed around the $20 handle. So often if the price can get pushed a little bit, then you get a lot of those high frequency algorithms kicking in and then you'll see a drop with many feeling that people kind of nudging a little are then able to buy lower. Does that right. sound like a reasonably accurate portrayal to put it in perspective to folks or would you phrase it differently? Well, it's a, it's a good portrayal, it's a good portrayal, but it's actually, it's a very good portrayal, but it's actually also. Now you can go hear the rest of that. What is spoofing? It's on YouTube. Um, cause he goes into, uh, next three minutes, some of the technicals, although I would say after basically going through the technicals, he summarizes it here. A second. So, uh, the difference in your description is that today when a market moves because of a spoof, it can move a lot more. And. I think we've seen that anyone who follows silver regularly sees that regularly. So anyway, plenty of videos about that on the channel. So hit the, sh the subscribe button and the notification bell and uh, take a look through there. Basically anything you'd want to know about silver has been laid out on the channel. And again, uh, I heard the forum was closed. Uh, I guess not anyone can just hop in there, but here is wall street bets. Um, thank you guys so much for bringing some attention to this. Uh, you know, I, there's a lot of us in silver world that are excited about silver and have been studying this for a while. And for whatever reasons, now our paths are crossing here. So uh, anyway, appreciate you guys taking a look at this and 
I think you'll be in, I think you'll be beyond stunned by what you find. In fact, uh, I actually did write a book about this, which I released last year. And I know you saw that silver chart there. Don't I, I'm aware of it. I'm teasing you a little bit. We're going to get there. But here's the big silver short, um, which is available on audio if you like listening to audio instead of reading. But for anyone on that short squeeze club, Here's the title. This wasn't written yesterday. This was last year. How the Wall Street banks have left the silver market in place for the short squeeze of a lifetime. I will stand by that title or subtitle as strongly now as I did when I wrote it. Again, one of the things that I personally love about the way the book come out was it wasn't just me sitting there writing my own opinion, but I interviewed 15, not 15 random silver traders but the, the most intelligent, informed people on this situation going back decades that I could find, that's what the Bart Chilton interview was for. Keith Newmeyer is the one mining executive interviewed in the book, and he talks about why he's been speaking about this for so long. David Morgan, Andrew McGuire, Ted Butler, Craig Hemke, Dave Kranzler, um, you know, really uh, trying to create something. So if you were starting from knew nothing about silver, and wanted to come up to speed as quickly as possible. Well, again, you could watch that video here, this one, the smoking gun, but a little bit more detailed and extensive. And you get really 15 experts with hundreds of combined years of experience. So again, I'm not trying to, I guess I'm pitching the book, but I think it'll be helpful in this particular situation. So Anyway, uh, gonna wrap this up. I am coming back with a very short video about silver because look at that. Yes, <laughs> it's gonna be a fun day. Although uh, we're gonna wrap this one up real quick. Would like to let you know, there is a conference tonight. Rob Keats of Gold Silver Pros is hosting Solutions 2021. Gonna be kicking off in a little bit. Quite a hot schedule here. Um, which the link to this is in the description field below, but there's James Anderson. Sure, there'll be a lot of talk about, I mean, it's my man, Alex Newman, uh, but a lot of talk about silver, First Majestic. And with that said, the markets are about to open. So I'll be back shortly with a video about the actual silver spike, which is quite exciting, but want to wrap this one up here. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you can stay posted and I will see you again shortly.